During much of antiquity, if you were born as a commoner, there were very few ways to escape your fate. In Aztec culture, there was possibly a clear path for commoners to attain nobility, become an elite warrior known as the Eagle and Jaguar Warriors. Who were these mythical elite warriors of Aztec culture? How did they train? And what can we learn? This is Ancient Workouts with me, Omar Isaf. In each episode, we examine the culture of one ancient group of warriors and try to apply aspects of their training, nutrition, and mentality into our own exercise routines. How do you stack up against these legendary warriors? Let's find out. The Aztec Empire began in the early 1400s as an alliance between three indigenous city-states and lasted until Spanish colonization led to the destruction of their society by the mid 1500s. And I want to note one of the city-states, Tenochtitlan, was massive. And when I say massive, I mean there was estimated to be over 100,000 people, which for the time was one of the most populous cities in the world. The name Aztec comes from the Nahuatl word Aztecal, which means people from Aztlan, reflecting the mythical place of origin for the Nahuatl peoples and was coined by Alexander von Humboldt. For this video, we'll say Mexica, which were Nahuatl speaking indigenous people in the Valley of Mexico. Almost all of our knowledge is based on sources post Spanish invasion and conquest of Aztec lands. None are politically neutral and very often have a vested interest in depicting the Aztec people as particularly vicious and primitive in order to justify ongoing colonization. It's incredibly disappointing. It seems the Aztec economy and society were based around war, specifically gaining tribute from conquered enemies. The Aztec emperor would reward successful warriors with honors, the right to wear certain colors, status, and land. You want to wear purple? Well, how many people did you capture? Huh? So you can't wear it. Eagle and Jaguar warriors were the highest of ranks open to commoners, representing the capture of four or more enemy combatants. A soldier would have had to have had great physical strength and bravery on the battlefield. It also came with more perks. Commoners who achieved Eagle or Jaguar rank could become nobility with land and social permission to drink alcohol, wear expensive jewelry, and dine at the palace. What was the difference between Eagle and Jaguar warriors? The difference was in which god they worshipped. Eagles worshipped Hitzelipokli, the war and sun god, and Jaguars worship Tizcalipoca, a major Aztec deity and god of night and darkness. Joining us to educate us further on Aztec culture is Dr. Maya Jimenez. So first, what are some common misconceptions people would have about Aztec culture? That's a good question, and there's so many, I don't know where to start. I would say the biggest misconception, and the one I always tell my students, is the erroneous idea that the Aztecs were bloodthirsty savages. And truth be told, yes, they did practice human sacrifice to appease their gods, but there's so much more context that I think is lost and understandings about their religion or their deities. Oftentimes this misconception comes at the expense of acknowledging other accomplishments that the did in medicine, in engineering, astronomy. And I also think you have to consider the colonization of the Aztecs by Spain. That itself was a violent event. The other one is this idea that the Aztecs kind of emerged out of nowhere and they were this long lasting empire. And again, the Aztecs were the last in a long line of Mesoamerican cultures that emerged in that area. And also, they emerged fairly late in kind of the history of the ancient Americas. If we compare them to the Maya, for example, who are also quite popular, the Maya were a culture from the pre-classic, classic, and post-classic period versus the Aztec, which were a culture of only the post-classic period and were in existence for about 180 years. So they accomplished much in so little time that I think it's just interesting to think what they could have accomplished had they not been colonized by Cortez. 
100%. Can you describe more for us about these Eagle and Jaguar warriors? We know that Aztecs had no standing army, but they did have military ranks. And within those ranks, Eagle and Jaguar warriors would have been considered of higher status. And the way you would rise up in those ranks had to do with the number of captives that you would bring after a flowering war. I think what's fascinating about this ranking system is that it tells us that the Aztecs valued these animal powers, right? And that when these warriors would dress like an eagle or like a jaguar, not only would they be wearing animal skin, which is quite extraordinary, but they would also take on the skills and the talent of this animal. And we see this quite clearly in sculpture, like the Eagle Warrior, which is a centerpiece today of the museum in Mexico City. And you see this Eagle Warrior, it's a ceramic sculpture, but this warrior is almost life-size, would have been painted, would have been decorated with feathers, and would have been placed above the doorway. So just imagine you yourself are an Eagle Warrior, and you're walking into the House of the Eagles in the center of Tenochtitlan, and you would have seen above you this towering eagle. So I think animal symbolism is really integral to Aztec ideas of war and battle. Dr. Maya, I'm sure many viewers are learning so much right now. What would be other things that perhaps they would find surprising about Aztec culture? I think the most surprising thing about the Aztecs is in their name, which in fact is not the Aztecs. That is a term that was introduced in the 19th century by a European explorer who gives the name Aztecs because they originated from the place of Aztlan. But the Aztecs actually called themselves the Mexica. And I say Mexica and it's actually spelled M-E-X-I-C-A which all the viewers out there are probably thinking that's the same way you spell Mexico, right? Replace the A for the O. And that is exactly right. So much of modern day Mexican culture today goes back to the Mexica and even to previous cultures like Teotihuacan and Olmec. So I think many viewers perhaps might not know how integral Mexica history is today to modern day Mexicans, not just in the name of the country Mexico, but even in the national flag of Mexico, that eagle that's in the center that's perched on a cactus is in fact a reference to how the Aztecs established their capital city of Tenochtitlan. Dr. Maya, I actually want to apologize then because in this episode, I didn't know it was Mexica, I said Mexica. Uh, and I mispronounced it. First of all, Omar, that is a very typical mistake. So you are not alone in that. There are many words that we use in English today that come from the Aztecs, again, originally known as the Mexica, who themselves spoke Nahuatl. Words like avocado, chocolate, are all Nahuatl words. And again, they go back to Mesoamerican culture. These were part of the diet of the Mesoamerican people. That was phenomenal. Sincerely, thank you for sharing all your knowledge. I think we learned a lot more just now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Omar. While there's no standing army, there was training for elite warriors. Both Eagle Warriors and Jaguar Warriors wore a war suit representing their respective animals. An Eagle Warrior would don garments to resemble an Eagle, a Jaguar to resemble a Jaguar. It was believed that dressing like the Eagle would allow the Warrior to adopt the power and skill of that animal. Every boy received military training so that when war broke out, any boy or man was called upon and ready for battle. The progress of each boy was tested frequently by the local temples, and those who displayed exceptional talent were moved on to further training that would set them up to be a warrior for life. However, not everyone that entered these schools would eventually become a warrior. Hey man, sit down, sit down, yeah. You've been training here for years, and we, we love, love the enthusiasm. I mean, you show up here every day with all that spunk, and you're training at the warrior school. The thing is, ah, you're not gonna cut it. It's not, it's not you, hey, it's not, it's not you. That we just, you know, the standard, you're not really, you know how it works. The good news, there's plenty of other jobs. 
how does it sound to be a farmer? I mean, it sounds better. It sounds terrible, but it's. Uh, I mean, you will adjust. You'll you'll adjust. You'll have to adjust. I mean, you're. I mean, you're. We're, we're kicking you out. Teens in training would carry firewood, shields, and weapons to the battlefronts to strengthen their muscles and make them fearless in the face of war. They also worked on civil service projects like digging canals and building muscle and strength while also contributing to the greater health of society. Now, I wanna take a moment here and allow us to understand that in antiquity, a lot of these things would have a transfer over towards general strength and hypertrophy. Digging canals would work your back muscles. It would be laborious. Detailed information on the exact training routine of these warriors does not exist. All we have are chronicles that do not offer very much detail other than the fact that the warriors underwent rigorous training. In terms of diet, Aztec food staples included maize, beans, and squash, plus chiles and tomatoes. They also ate protein-packed chia and quinoa, along with fish and wild game. Again, we know very little about the actual training of Aztec warriors due to how much history has been lost. However, there are some very strong inferences we can make. One would be the utility in antiquity and modernity of power training. Power training has a speed and strength component, so trying to move something as fast as possible. Virtually all athletic endeavors will have a power component in it because not only do you need to move something, it usually, once again, needs to be moved as fast as possible. Throwing projectiles like spears and slings of the Eagle Wars would be a dynamic movement requiring power. In many gyms these days, activities are more low velocity. Like when you squat or do a row or a bicep curl, you're not necessarily lifting explosively. But could there be some benefit to incorporating power training into your routine? Can we evoke these eagle warriors? Are we leaving gains on the table? Joining me to discuss power training is my good friend, Dr. Mike Zordos, who has done research on this very topic and is a pioneer in the field. Dr. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks so Mark, excited to be here. It certainly seems like these warriors would need to develop power when they're throwing objects, projectiles. For the average person looking to incorporate power training into their lifting, what should they do? If you're doing regular push-ups, well, instead, you could do something like plyometric push-ups where you're pushing yourself off the ground. For those jumps, those squat jumps, going into a squat and then jumping up as high as you can. Things that you're moving quickly. You don't want to slow. So when you want to uh, generate power and you want to train for power, I would encourage you, as soon as the movement begins to slow, that's when you stop and you rest and then you do another set. It's different if you're growing muscle, you're going to continue to do repetitions until you're fatiguing. So you want to stop that exercise quickly once that velocity or speed begins to slow. In the gym, you pick up a barbell, load it with about half the weight you could typically do, do it for two, three, four reps. As soon as that velocity starts to slow on the barbell, you stop that exercise. If you want to move fast, you have to practice moving fast. Mike, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your information as it relates to power training. Thanks, Omar. Good man. Luckily for you, we have an excellent exercise routine. Three exercises to try and mimic what the Aztec warriors would do. Not in terms of training, but power development. Think about it, right? We're doing first the jump squat, which is explosive, trying to jump as high as possible. The second movement would be kettlebell swings. If you don't have access to a kettlebell, that's okay. A Romanian deadlift with dumbbells or with a barbell for hip hinge. So once again, power, posterior chain, back of the legs. And then lastly, the third movement, will be the medicine ball throw or slam. Now, we're turning this last one into our ancient warrior challenge, where the goal will be to throw the medicine ball as far as possible. The heavier the medicine ball, the heavier and harder it will be to throw. You can adjust accordingly or just stick to the slams. Modern warriors, let's get after it. This movement is the jump squat, aimed at developing explosive power. Think about it, Aztec warriors would need that when it came to warfare. What you wanna make sure you do is take an athletic stance, jump comfortably, not as high as possible, land softly, and focus on being explosive. Let's do this.
This movement is the kettlebell swing aimed at developing posterior strength. So think hamstrings, glutes, lower back, and explosiveness just what the Aztec Warriors needed. The kettlebell swing is a great movement. If you don't have access, you can use dumbbells at home and do a Romanian deadlift. Let's get after this. This movement is the medicine ball throw. You wanna be explosive. You're trying to accelerate as fast as possible. So we're really priming the upper body here. Chest, shoulders, and triceps. It also is our ancient warrior challenge. You have three attempts to throw a heavy medicine ball, heavy as you can find, as far as possible. Let's do this. Let's see how far I can do it. about 100 feet. About 250. We'll round down though, 225. About 300 feet. Eagle and Jaguar Warriors represented the apex warriors of Mesoamerica. The training and skill that they developed during warfare stand the test of time. Thanks for watching. May you achieve all of your goals and let me know in the comment section below what culture of ancient wars you'd like to see me explore next. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Ancient Warriors with Omar.